What's up, hobby friends, and welcome to my video tutorial on how to paint Marvel Crisis Protocol's Domino. I'm going to have the list of colors I use on the screen now. So if you want to take a pause, note down the colors, and then we'll dive right on in. You can see in terms of building and prep, I built the model as is, no sub-assemblies. I did remove the hair. Cleaned up the forehead a little bit because it does have some sculpted hair down there. And then I replaced that with some Woodland Scenics ground tuft or ground foliage to create that sort of Afro uh, look. So basically all I did was I took some, some Mod Podge, some super glue, made it clump, and then I just glued on bits and pieces to create the shape that I wanted, a little bit extra on the sides to cover the gap and to have some of those bangs dropping down. And that's pretty much it. So on top of the black primer, I'm going to start with a airbrush coat of AK's Pale Sands. And this is just to give a bit more of a brighter midtone or base coat for the yellow airbrush and we're going to do afterwards. From there, I'm going to start with a base coat of Volcanic Yellow and I'm just going to apply a nice even base coat over all of the base. The goal here essentially is to start laying down the fire and the explosion effect using the airbrush and to save all that doing it by hand. From there, I'm going to go with a 50-50 mix of Volcanic Yellow and Burn Orange. And I'm going to start airbrushing at the top of the fire, basically under the rock, to start creating that fade. And then we'll push it even further by mixing in some Blood Red and focusing just where the rock meets the tip of that explosion effect. What I'm looking to do is airbrush in a way that I can capture the red on one side and have a yellow on the other. So you want to make sure that your airbrush is pointed in the right direction to preserve that yellow undertone. And then I'll take AK's yellow and do a final airbrush on the very base of the explosion effect to get that brighter color tone in there. Again, note that I am spraying from underneath the base towards the top of the model to capture the yellow on the underside of the explosion and the, the rocky effects. With yellow and volcanic yellow, I'm going to go in by hand and I'm going to start to apply some fine line highlights in between each of the individual clusters and shapes on the explosion effect. Now, whether it's a rock or an explosion, I don't quite know yet. I'm just looking to get the yellow in there and sort of snake up that color, apply some of those highlights, especially on the top where the airbrushing sort of covered up and created a more um, broad effect or fade. From there, I'm going to take Gaming Yellow and I'm going to apply a glaze over the entire fire effect. And this is just to increase the saturation, more so on the orange area. I find that burn orange and in combination with the blood red, it tended to sort of be a little flatter. So I wanted to increase the saturation. And I'll take some orange from Vallejo and I'll do the exact same thing, focusing on the orange red areas at the top. This is more just a saturation filter to brighten up the color and increase the vibrancy of the flames. And then finally, I'll take some burnt red and I'm going to focus this darkest part at the very tips where it meets the rock, as well as some of the extraneous explosion, I guess, tendrils. Those little out juts where it's a little too bright. I'm just going to brighten down, go back in with this burnt red and create a bit of a darker, cooler portion of the fire. And then with the rock painted, I'm going to go in with some pure yellow and just apply some final highlights in between the rocks and any particular areas I feel need a bit of brightness. I'm not going to go into how I painted the rocks and ground in this tutorial, mainly because I've covered it before. If you want to check out how I did it, you can look at my previous videos. I've done it for Dr. Octopus, Colossus, and Dr. Strange. And then finally, we're going to go in with some Game Ink Yellow and Vallejo Orange. And we're going to apply a few glazes onto the stone. This is just to create a bit of that OSL effect near the base of the fire. I want to focus this on areas where the fire directly meets the ground and not overdo it too much. I want the yellow to be subtle and not overpower the base. Once that's done, I'm going to paint the base trim black. And this is more just to look at the color balance before going on to the rest of the model. To start with the black suit, I'm going to use a 50-50 mix of black and anthracite gray and just apply a base coat over all of the black areas. I'm going to go in with pure anthracite gray next 
and start to highlight the suit. This model was a particular challenge, largely because a lot of the suit is effectively folds and wrinkles. So you're not really doing a lot of smooth blending, although you could, but you're more so picking out wrinkles and folds. The highlight, I'll start mixing in some APC interior light green. And depending on how bright or dark or how reflective you want the suit, you can increase or, or decrease the progression and the brightness of your highlights, as well as the subtlety or contrast from your dark tones to mid tones to highlights. I want this to be a, not a shiny um, leather suit, but something that's like a bright tactical black suit. So I'm taking it to a mid-tone brightness and I'm not gonna overdo it on the contrast in the folds. Once I've done the highlighting, I'm gonna go back in with my airbrush, take a 50-50 mix of a black and anthracite gray, and I'm just going to glaze in the mid-tones to smooth up the blends and then punch up the shadows a little bit. I found as I was highlighting, the suit ended up being too bright. And so I wanted to go back in and just knock back some of that intensity and the values, especially in those shadow tones. I'm gonna use some medium sea gray and basically base coat, prepare all of the white parts of the suit. So we're looking at the front, running down her chest and the abdomen in the back. And then with pale blue, I will start my highlighting. You're gonna notice that I am ignoring the seam on the front where the suit zips together. And what I'm looking to do is just focus on locking in general folds, as well as concentrating on where the highlights will be. And then from there, I'm gonna start mixing in some greenish white. Between pale blue and greenish white, it's a fairly big value jump. So you're gonna to wanna to mix a few intermediary steps. Dilute your paints and just build up your colors. The greenish white, while not a pure white, has a lot of white pigment in there and it can be very easy to get chalkiness or a texture to your paint application if you don't dilute the paint enough. So take your time, build up your layers. And as you can see, as I'm building up the layers, I'm starting to focus more and more on the individual folds. And I'm focusing on the tops of the chest and the abs where the torso is sticking outwards and not the underside of the belly where it tucks in. And then for my final highlight, I'm gonna go in with pure white. And I'm mainly concentrating this on the top of the bosom, as well as where the quote unquote collarbone will be, even though it is hidden by the suit. I'm gonna take a 50-50 mix of medium sea gray and anthracite gray, and with a nice dilution, I'm gonna go in and paint that seam. I'm gonna take some dark sea blue, and I'm gonna base coat all of these straps, as well as any buckles or anything that's gonna be painted in non-metal metal silver on Domino. So I take your time and make sure you're not overpainting onto any of the white or gray suit elements. From there, I'm gonna go with light Prussian blue and I'm gonna base coat all of the straps. And from here on out, when we're painting the straps, you wanna make sure that you're highlighting to indicate how the straps are sort of folding and bending. I'm gonna continue highlighting by mixing in aquatic turquoise. And you can see what I mean when I'm highlighting. I'm doing these up and down highlights for straps that are running across horizontally. And then of course, I'll go horizontally for straps that are running vertically. And this is to simulate the way that the leather is going to crack and bend as it wraps around the torso or the arm or the leg. Essentially, however the motion of the strap bends, you want your highlights to be perpendicular to. I'm also gonna take care to edge highlight the sides, or in this case, the top and the bottom, as well as any areas that are adjacent to like buckles or any sort of um, pouches or whatever. And this is more just a stylistic or artistic choice just to add a bit more pop and definition to those areas. And then for the final highlight, I'll take aquatic turquoise with some pastel yellow, and I'll just keep refining a couple spots. I'm not gonna go over all of the strap, but I'm focusing on areas that are gonna capture the most light, areas adjacent to metal buckles or clips that might get some reflection, and making sure that I really pick out those edges, especially near the top. Again, artistic choice mainly for definition. I'm gonna start with a base coat of Scale Colors African Shadow for the skin. 
From there, saddle brown to start to highlight and blocking the general facial features. You want to take care not to overshadow any wrinkles or folds. Feminine faces tend to be softer in the transitions. You don't really notice, especially like jowls or cheekbones, anything too pronounced areas like in the eye sockets. We are basing this off of the Deadpool 2 film reference. So if you need to look up a picture of the actress and um, highlight and shade the skin accordingly. I'm gonna mix in some beige red with the saddle brown to begin the highlighting. And when you're highlighting darker skin tones, it's really important to preserve your mid-tones. Try not to overdo your highlights. Your mid-tones is where you're gonna get a lot of the, the color palette of the, the skin. So when I'm highlighting up here, I'm really focusing on areas that would be quote unquote shiny and not over the entire face. I'm gonna mix in a bit of sunny skin tone. For my brightest highlights, try and get a bit of that peachy yellow color going in. And again, don't overdo it. You want to make sure that you're focusing on more pronounced areas like the top of the chin, the nose, top of the lips, nose and the eyebrows. Make sure you're preserving that nice orange brown and mid-tone color. I'm going to take orange leather from scale 75. And I'm going to do a few glazes into the mid and shadow tones, especially on the sides of the cheek, the neck, and the forehead, just to introduce a bit more of that sort of rosy orange tone. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing with AK's black red, focusing on some of the deeper shadow tones and to add more of that um, warmth and rosiness. This is also a great time to take a bit of that color, redefine the lips where the top and bottom meet, and then with a bit more of a diluted mix, start to pick up some of those individual muscle forms, get that jawline going. I'm gonna use tenebrous gray to paint in the eyes. And we're gonna use the exact same color to paint the pupils and the eyebrows as well. Scale colors white sands is going to be used to paint the whites of the eyes. And the method I'm gonna do with this is basically Black dot, white dot, black dot. So tenebrous gray to do the black dot of the socket, white sands to do the white dot of the eye, and then tenebrous gray again to do the black dot of the pupil. Using a photo as reference, I'm gonna use white sands to paint the mark over her eye. Now I've got the paint semi-diluted to a milky texture for this so that I can build up the layers. And in this way, as I lay down the color, I can refine the shape but also create that highlighting. So the first few passes will have a couple of that skin tone or a bit of that skin tone showing through, so it's like a tattoo. And then as we highlight, we can push the bright highlights more into that pure white. And here you see that I am using the tenebrous gray to paint the eyebrow. I'm gonna paint it on both sides. And then because I still have some of the white sands as well as the skin tone on the palette, I'll use that to erase and correct to refine and sharpen the eyebrows because I probably didn't do it right the first time. And then finally, I'm gonna go in with some Games Workshop Drifty Violet and just glaze over the deepest shadows, focusing on the jawline, the side of the head where it meets the hair, the lid of the eye underneath the eyebrow, as well as where the neck meets the collar of the suit. I'm also gonna do a few layers to do the bags of the eyes, but nothing too heavy, too much, and you end up making her look tired and a little older. Paint the belt buckle. We're gonna do burnt red, blood red, and scarlet red as our progression. And it's really just three simple colors, one after another. I'm gonna start with a base coat of burnt red, making sure to pick out the X in the buckle, and then Highlight with a few glazes of blood red and then follow that up with scarlet red. With the paint diluted on my palette, I'm able to just feather the colors out and do a bit of sort of wet blending while the paint is still wet on the figure itself as well. To do the non metal metal, I'm going to do gray blue with some dark sea blue if I need to define the edges and then highlighting with spectrum blue and greenish white. Because all of the metal on this model is essentially very thin buckles, 
There's not a lot of blending you have to do. It's just one color after another. Much like when we're doing the red belt buckle, if the paint's nice and diluted, you can sort of feather and pull those highlights out and create that transition. And on a small surface, it doesn't have to be perfect. With the greenish white, I'm going to make sure that I capture a highlight on the top. And then for the buckles, do some dots on the bottom left and bottom right corners for some reflections. For the grenades, I'm going to start with a base coat of AK's Gunship Green. I'm going to try and leave the black lining for the details of the grenade. If I do make any mistakes or overpaint, I have some black on the palette that I can just go and correct. And then to create my highlighting, I'm going to mix in progressive amounts of green sky. And how bright or how dark depends on for you, what you're painting, where it is on the model. I'm going for this sort of military um, army green look. And they're actually fairly flat, so they're not going to have super sharp highlights. It's not going to be like metal where it's high contrast. It's going to be softer and a lot more of a matte finish. To paint the hair, I'm going to start with Vallejo's German Camel Black Brown. And I'm going to apply a liberal um, dry brush over the hair. In hindsight, I probably would have started this first before painting the rest of the model. With reddish black, we're going to start to dry brush our highlights. I'm going to be focusing on the front and the top of the fro. And because the paint is still wet, I can start to wet blend first with the reddish black and then adding in medium rust to continue that dry brushing. So we're sort of doing a dry brush wet blend technique. And then finally, with some Drucci Violet shade in the airbrush, mixed about 50-50 with water and some flow improver, I'm going to airbrush this nuance into the shadow tones of the model. This is something I do over all of my Marvel collection. It's just a way to introduce a unifying color, to sort of um, unify the color palettes. To apply the posters, I'm going to use a tweezer. And after doing some initial shaping, I'm going to use some Mod Podge or PVA glue and apply the posters to the base. Because I'm using the posters to help reinforce the motion of the explosion, what I want to do is, as I glue and attach them on, I want to continually sharpen and reshape them. So the dampness from the water and the PVA glue is going to help to soften the paper. And what I'll be doing over a period of about a half hour to an hour, every layer of PVA glue I do, I'll apply some to the poster. And then with my tweezers and my fingers, I'll reshape and add a few more folds, a bit more texture to the actual poster itself. And in this way, sort of like a paper mache thing, as I'm wetting and applying the Mod Podge to help solidify the poster, I'm also shaping it to the final form and the final shape and position that I want. The Mod Podge I'm using dries fairly quickly, so in between each layer, especially if we're doing several posters, it doesn't take too long to dry, maybe five, 10 minutes at most. Don't forget to apply the Mod Podge to the back as well. This will help to make the paper a lot more solid, a lot more durable, and it also helps to seal the paper from any further moisture. And then we're going to finish up with some weathering powders on the base. What I have here is a pre-mixed 50-50 mix of Vallejo's Burnt Umber and Dark Yellow Ochre. And again, just like with the Drucci Violet, I do this on all my Marvel models. It's a way of unifying the entire collection, even though every model may have a unique and individual color palette. I'm going to apply them liberally to the posters, especially on the back. And then where I do um, overpaint the pigments onto the edge of the base, I'm going to use my damp brush and just wipe it all up before finally sealing everything with mineral spirits. The spirits will take about, I call it an hour to dry. And once the mineral spirits has fully set, you can apply a varnish of choice and your model is complete. I'm using Mr. Hobby's Super Clear, which is a nice matte varnish that will protect the model because this is a gaming piece. So that about wraps up this video tutorial. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope it helps you to paint your own domino or other Marvel Crisis Protocol models. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe for more awesome weekly content. If you want to check out my other social media platforms, I'll make sure to have links in the video description below. As always, until next time, happy hobbying.